I'd like to introduce Mathieu to the stage, and um, we're going to change the conversation again. This has been running away from us quite often, so I'm going to keep it close to me. <laughs> Welcome, Matteo. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, and thank you, the Dubai Chamber of Commerce, for the invitation. So Matteo is a co-founder of Thaley, which is a sustainable sneaker apparel brand. He's doing amazing work in that space. I've been watching him grow his brand from the start. He's been in the Dubai angel investor scene for a while now as well, also investing in startups that are all about sustainability, green business. So maybe, Matteo, start with your story. What brought you to Dubai, firstly? And what do you, how do you see Dubai actually contributing to the sustainable development goals? Okay, let's start with the, the story. Um, coming from a family of Swiss bankers, uh, my family, they are bankers since more than 100 years in Switzerland. Uh, very boring, to be honest. Uh, I was grown with the, already the tie and the jacket and everything, uh, without piercing, of course, because this was my attachment to be a rebel. Um, in Switzerland, we have this system of um, apprenticeship where you start at the age of 15 years old and you are in a process of um, one-third school, one-third bank academy, and uh, one-third work. Um, I did nine years for the same bank. In the meantime, I had two years in the Swiss Army, uh, still mandatory, and I graduate as a chief surgeon mayor there. I did my uh, master's degree in communication and marketing during the night and weekends. And um, after I was very bored, you know, I, my social impact uh, as a Swiss banker was almost zero. Uh, I was managing Italian client, uh, clientele and, um, you know, reaching a point where you have to lie or cover certain things was not uh, done, was not good for me. Moved to New York, study business English there, moved to South America for a six month trip. And after Dubai appeared to me as a Aussie of opportunity in the desert, uh, I came here, started my first company in 2016. Uh, I remember, by the way, that I was pitching my first startup here at the Dubai Chamber. And uh, apparently my pitch was not that successful, but I sold the company 11 months later. So that was a great thing. Uh, after that, I reinvested in uh, now more than 10 startups. A few of them are terribly failed, uh, painfully as well. And uh, a few of them are in a, in a freezer kind of uh, stage, and a few of them are doing very good. And how do you handpick the projects you want to invest in? So for me, it's very important that there is a social and environmental uh, aspect. Uh, that's for me the, the most important uh, part. All the startups that I'm in uh, are having something that uh, provides a, a better future for not just for the environment, but as well for the people. Do you see Dubai as a place where a, there's a lot of investors who support these kind of businesses or startups? To be honest, yes. Start uh, Dubai is it's it's a place where investor can easily meet. Uh, to be honest, uh, for me, it was mentioned in a presentation before, networking is the most important thing. Uh, you can have the best idea in the world, and if you stay in front of your computer and 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 try to search for funds, we, it will never happen. Uh, my, personally, tonight is the 25th night in a row that I'm not eating at home. Luckily, my wife loves these kind of events and networking and embassy and consulate and, and business. Uh, but you have to go out. You have to go out, meet people. And uh, there is here, Hester, a demonstration that we met by chance. And now she's uh, an angel investor like me investing in startups as well. So uh, for me, staying in front of a computer and trying to search more investor will not be possible. Yeah, I totally agree. What are tips that you would give someone who's um, looking for funds? Just get out and network. Yeah, that's and where do you go? How do you, how do you handpick where to go if you're looking for investors? Because yeah. that's the question, right? In Dubai, probably you have 300 events per night related to business angel or business investment or startup. So it's just a matter of searching. LinkedIn here is a very good platform. Uh, there are many opportunities, but again, you have to step out of the comfort zone that... Uh, uh, we were talking about before, she was talking about before, and, and really try the best to, to find the opportunity around you. And also, I think it, it has a lot to do with how you sell your story, if you have an elevator pitch of you know, what it is that you, you are either building or you want to invest in. You've got to have that nailed when you get out there. Um, tell us a little bit about your journey with Thaley, because this is really exciting. 
Yeah, actually, it's a, it's a very romantic, uh, fun story. Um, I'm doing uh, sporadic courses in university here, uh, entrepreneurship and sustainability, and Amity University invited me to uh, start up Shark Tank uh, competition as a judge. I was there, there were a few uh, startups, most of them were related to IT and cyber things and crypto that I still don't get it and for me it's very complicated still. Um, and there was this young guy, Ashai Bave, he had uh, 19 years old at the time, he came out on stage uh, very confident with a pair of shoes, the most ugliest shoes I ever saw in my life. Very, dis like, very bad. But I saw something in, in his eyes, in, in his mind, in his uh, behavior, and he had a business plan that was very rough, but he, he understood what he wanted. The mission and vision was there. Uh, the guy ended up winning the competition. The same day, uh, I, I shake in his hand and I said, listen, uh, let's start a company together. Um, at that time, I got 49% of the company for $12,000. And up to last week, the company is now $10 million. So I dilute myself. Esther is joining as well this adventure. The, the thing is, the, the, was, was luck as well. I was in the right place in the, in the right moment. If I was sick that day, I was losing the opportunity of, of my life, most probably. Um, but the vision and how you pitch your idea is, again, more than half of the, the roads to the success. So tell us about the shoes. Yeah, so I don't have it now <laughs> because I had another shoes. meeting. I know, before. I didn't expect you. But not we to have come in the Esther here that uh, has it on it. <laughs> so you, if you go. To walk on stage. <laughs> <laughs> we have a model. The demo of the shoes. <laughs> Yes, we have brown, blue, white, and, and full black. Uh, we were awarded as a uh, top five um, fashion company in uh, Fashion Week India uh, last week. Uh, we as well won uh, best sneakers from PITA and uh, yeah, many, many awards as well from uh, the UAE government. So this, the, the shoes is 100% vegan, uh, glue uh, is vegan, the ink is vegan, uh, recycled rubber from industrial rubber, uh, the laces are RPT, so plastic bottle, and we as well um, patented our material, Teletex, that is 100% made from uh, recycled uh, plastic bags, the only way that you can actually uh, recycle it into a, a kind of leather um, fabric. And how did you, where did you do the initial prototype? Was it here in the UAE or did you do it in, I think, India you had mentioned? Yes, so Ashai made the first prototype in India. After we made the second and third and fourth prototype here in the UAE, there is a factory that uh, manufactures shoes. If, if you are not aware, it's a very good company. And after we went through the industrial uh, production, uh, a few weeks ago, uh, we were contacted by Bata Shoes, uh, where we will do all our production. Uh, so um, the, the, the important thing, again, not just the sustainability aspect, but um, how we produce. So we have a certified uh, production site that um, pay women and men at the same time. Uh, all the rights, uh, solar panel, water consumption, audited um, it two, on every two, three months. So it's not just um, the product itself is the, the 360 degree. Uh, and as I mentioned, now we are moving with, uh, with Bata for the, for the production, yeah. How much did it cost you to create your first prototype? Yeah, it was around, the, the first product was around $40, uh, $40, $50, yeah. Isn't that just fascinating? Like just to put a small amount aside to design something that you're truly passionate about, and now it's a 10 million valuation, right? Yeah, that's, that's the thing, you know, a lot of people think that uh, have getting investment, uh, you know, crazy valuation or, or like a lot of money with really five, ten, fifteen thousand dollar, you, you can really make the, the first uh, first step into the right direction. High risk, of course, but high opportunity. So this is what I am. I'm sometimes a bit too much as a gambler. Uh, I love risking, uh, but I love the re reward that comes with it. What's your take on the current fundraising scene in the UAE? Sorry, Dan. What's your take on the current fundraising scene in the UAE? It's uh, it's possible. It's possible. Uh, startups have 
access. Uh, there are plenty of people that uh, has a lot of money and don't know, really know what, what to do or rather than buy NFT or, or houses or, or Ferrari. Uh, there are a lot of philanthropic investors, uh, people that believe not really in the return of investment uh, because in certain cases can take three, four, five, six or never come. Um, so people that really believe in the idea and uh, even if it doesn't succeed, you, you give hope and you, you make a small change. So Dubai is a, is a great playground to, for, for investors like me. So there's a lot of potential here, yet we've had conversations today about fundraising being difficult. So the, the question to ask then are what are the tips and tricks if you want to raise funds? What, what do you need to have ready to get out there and really start speaking to people? Yeah, first of all, believing in, in your idea, in your product, this is, uh, you know, by the books. Uh, for me, is the, the feeling, uh, as soon as somebody talked to me and explained me something, I, I have to understand it. Uh, and it has to have a, a very positive impact. And, and people then, they really have to, to have a proof of concept as well that what they are saying or doing, uh, it works. You know, we can, everybody can think, okay, we are going to invent the invisible car that on paper is very good, but... Uh, you have to go out in the market, not to explain it, but to prove that what you're offering is, 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 is doable. Even if it's a small proof of, of, of concept. Do you work with entrepreneurs to help them? Yes. So what I love is to invest in companies, especially in Dubai, that uh, where I'm the first customer. I make you the example of Zofer. I hope everybody is using Zofer. It's a very amazing company. And so I was the customer of this. What is Zofer? Let, yeah, let's take it, a step back. So it, it's, a, it's a safe driver um, company. I was one of the first 100 customers. And I was unbelievably incre uh, incredible how a very good service was that cheap. Uh, so I asked the driver to give me the number of the CEO. I called him and I said, okay, I want to meet you tomorrow. Let's have a, I need to understand. For me, it was, uh, was unbelievable how they were making money out of this um, service. And we sit down and everything, and I went through the business plan, and um, I tried to, to mentor them as well before investing to understand a bit uh, why they, they, they were able to do this and why, how they can improve. And after you enter as, a, as an investor, and up to date, uh, before it was two uh, trips a week, now we do 300 trips a day. So it's, it's not because of me, I enter probably again right place and right moment, uh, but it's, uh, it's as well what they needed was a, um, a customer touch. They were too much involved in the company itself and they were losing a bit the perspective of how the customer was feeling about it. And you had told me a little bit about your journey going to India and growing the business there, right? And how you landed the deal with Bada, which is, you know, a very big brand in India. And they will be um, pretty much supplying your, your shoes to schools over there, which is amazing. Um, how was your journey to actually step out? We talked about comfort zones. And I remember us talking about how that experience going to India and just you know, having to negotiate deals was, was really tiresome and challenging. I think it's important as entrepreneurs to know that, like what Wafa said, we have to constantly step out of our comfort zone. So share a little bit about your story in India and how it ended up becoming this amazing end result where you have landed a deal with one of the biggest companies in India. Yeah, India was, was a bit before Tele, so I went there for another startup uh, in Pune. I lived there four months. Uh, the startup, unfortunately, didn't um, succeed. It failed. It was one of the 90% the of my, my story is failure, so that's, that's the, the reality. Um, and after these four months, I came back home and I said to, to, to at that time, my, my girlfriend, now that she's my wife, Listen, don't even think about it, that I'm going to go back to India. There is no one chance in, in the world. And uh, basically, she ended up saying, oh, sorry, you already booked a four weeks trip uh, all around India. And I say, OK. Now, that was fascinating because going there, working there, making deal and uh, exchanging uh, business relationship there was, was extremely tough. Uh, you know, I was staying in a small apartment. They were cutting electricity and water. I don't know how many times. There were always festivals, so they were closing offices, road, a mess. Uh, but after I went these, uh, these months backpacking and it was the, one of the best trip I ever did in my life. Uh, and this probably brought me to understand better 
um, Indian or, or, or Pakistani or Bangladesh entrepreneur. And to be honest, in my portfolio, I mostly invest in, in, in this kind of uh, people from this region because I, I understand how they, they, they feel and they think and they are amazing people, better than European, to be honest. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's amazing. It's so it's really beautiful to see how an entrepreneur goes through those journeys. Right. And like you come out the other side victorious, but the 90 percent failure is still there and you have to own that. Right. So thank you for sharing that and being honest about it. Who has questions for Matteo? Because I could go on asking you a lot of questions about um, investors and how to, you know, network in these circles, how to find these circles in Dubai. Who has a question for Matteo that they want answered? What is your next project? Ooh, so we close uh, an investment uh, as well. With, uh, I don't know if we can mention it or you want to be secret or something, but uh, we, we, we did uh, recently an investment in a um, laundry service, uh, home delivery uh, laundry service, you would say, okay, Matteo, you speak about being green and being sustainable. Where is your angle? Uh, basically, we, we can avoid using more water and electricity in an industrial scale rather than, than doing it at home. And as well, we can use um, more uh, sustainable products rather than the, the classic uh, home service. Uh, we are looking into as well an investment in a, uh, startups that do um, recyclable collection door to door. Uh, this is something that we are we are discussing. We are looking into it, uh, but I'm always open to to, to any opportunity. So yeah, social impact envir environment mostly. Yes, yeah. I'm not a very good tech guy, to be honest. Yes. How people can approach you in their project? Uh, so this uh, deep dub guy is the laundry service. Uh, very brave guy. Send me a message on LinkedIn. I answer. We met for a coffee two, three times, and that's it. That will how the message. Yeah. Oh, yes. you are going to get messages today. <laughs> Yeah, that's actually a very good question. And I think we, we talk about when we met over the coffee. So my, my success rate is extremely low, but from the other hand, my, my wife's success rate is almost 100% correct. So what I do, I spend two months in the due diligence, business plan, financial plan, market research, everything. And um, uh, I, I meet the founders many times during these two months, trying to understand the gut feeling and everything. And the last test before putting the money in the bank account is meeting them uh, over a coffee or a dinner at, at our home with my wife, uh, one or two hours together, and we close the door, and she look at me, is it a yes or a no? Very judgmental, and whatever she says, I, I do. So she has the, the female touch and she's a teacher she's not a business person at all and most of the time she doesn't really understand the numbers behind the opportunity the return of investment but she has the, the feeling of saying yes or no yes Exit strategy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very good question. So I consider myself in the group of FFF, that it's friend, family, and fool. So I'm the fool one that jumps in in it. And um, luckily, I have a, a group of other investor, bigger investor than me. Uh, so not at the angel pre-seed, but but bigger. So series uh, A or, or B. Uh, they throw me in the cage with the lions. If I survive with a few scarf around and uh, not too much blood, they say, okay, uh, we back you up and they, they inject more, more money uh, in, in the startups so the valuation grows and I can do a partial exit uh, or not. Um, I try to be very active at the be beginning to give my suggestion to the, to the startups and help them with the, the network. And um, once the startup starts to, to going well, I, I, I let them go and I give them total independence. I, I'm not a guy that will tell the founders what to do and not what to do. They are in full charge. And um, I try just to assist them. Yes. One more question. 
Ah, uh, yes. Hi, sorry. <laughs> yes. Uh, is the team is the team is the people behind uh, we had cases of uh, great idea perfect place perfect timing a lot of money invested uh, everything was perfect and everything fall apart because of the team that's uh, it's something that you cannot really predict uh, numbers uh, are, are quite easy to 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 be read it and, and learn it uh, people can easily change and and screw the business Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for your time, Matteo. We're excited to see where Thaley goes. I'm definitely buying my myself a pair of those shoes in India, uh, specifically in India, to contribute to that economy. Thank you. And we will be sharing Matteo's details. Be uh, be um, cautious. There will be a swarm of messages on LinkedIn. These women know what they want. <laughs> so that's the reason why in, in two days I'm, I'm flying to Nepal for hiking. So Buddhist temple far away from everyone. No connection for eight days. So if I don't answer, don't, don't, don't think that I, I'm rude. To give me some time. So. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, the thank chamber. You. And uh, if I may just add something, for me, it would be a great pleasure to, to, to help the chamber or help the startups that, are, that you are, are having, um, even organizing angel investment uh, groups, because there are a lot of people that want to make an, an impact and together we can be stronger and, and be greener uh, and make a very good impact for everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anne. Thank you.